Yo, what's good, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to the new show in LA. It's a new show in LA. Starring me, your boy TPJ of Hoops and Brews. I'm here to talk all Clippers basketball with you all the time. This is a brand new weekly thing that I'm going to be bringing to you guys, not only on the Twitter page, uh, which you can find us now. We now are active on Twitter. Um, shout out to Zotan Podcast and the Lakers, um, you know, our, our arch rival now. Make sure you follow us, um, you know, on Twitter. It's new show in LA at Twitter. Um, you can find us there. You can find us on iTunes as well as SoundCloud. Just search the new show in LA podcast with TPJ or just search Hoops and Brews and you can find it that way. This show is all about the LA Clippers. If you don't know, last year, myself, the homie Pavi, we covered the LA Clippers uh, for the entire duration of the season. Not every single game, I believe we covered in total about nine or 10 games, um, but we did cover throughout the season and it was sprinkled out. We actually saw the Clippers a lot of the time when they play bad teams. And usually the thing that you see when you um, see teams play bad teams are um, you know, lapses in judgment um, errors where they can make on defense, um, thinking about little mistakes and things of that sort. Um, the, you know, we got a lot of clips last year of Doc Rivers specifically talking about just trying to stay focused, um, especially heading into the playoffs. Uh, and you know, and, and to think that this Clippers team now has Kawhi Leonard, now has Paul George on this team, now that they have you know re-signed uh, you know a, you know a Visa Zuba, they've re-signed Patrick Beverly, Lou Will is on a deal already, Montrez Harrell is on a deal already. They re-signed Jermichael Green on a two-year deal. Um, they you know they traded for Mo Harkless. Uh, this team is a very 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 deep team. You're looking at a guy like Landry Shaman who's coming in for a second year uh, on the team. And a guy like Landry is a guy that I think will be key for this team going forward. I think, you know, as you could, um, you know, see a lot of the times during the games last year, they relied on Landry to hit a lot of big shots for them late. Landry is a guy that's a shooter. It's, like, it's crazy that Jerry West was able to, you know, get uh, Landry Shaman away from the 76ers in exchange for Tobias Harris. Obviously, Tobias Harris is a match, but Jerry West used those picks that he got along with Landry Shaman to build a quality team. And this is the kind of team that can attract a guy like a Kawhi Leonard. So, this show, the new show in LA with your boy TPJ, um, we're going to be talking all Clippers basketball. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you know everybody that's out there that reports for the Clippers. Um, you know the guys, you know the locked in on you know Clippers guys, Tom Azerly, um, the other guy I believe his name is Farbod, I think so. You know, so shout out to everybody that reports on the LA Clippers. Hopefully, um, you know I can get some calling guests to you know to get into the show and you know talk LA Clippers. Uh, hopefully, I can get Clipper Daryl one day to call in on the show and talk to us about the Clippers. Um, but this is a once in a week you know segment in regards to the you know to the LA Clippers. So obviously. If you don't know, you've been hiding under a rock. Kawhi Leonard has chosen to sign with the LA Clippers. This is not only a monumental shift in the NBA, but also a monumental shift overall as it pertains to the way that LA has looked at. This team to me is no longer the little brother. This team to me is no longer a second fiddle. A lot of people think that the duo of Anthony Davis and LeBron James is better than the duo of Kawhi Leonard and, uh, you know, and Paul George. I disagree. I think that the Clippers have the better duo. I think the Clippers have the better team overall in LA. The, you know, you know, Lakers have added DeMarcus Cousins and Avery Bradley and those guys, but they're still not scaring me in terms of the Clippers. Now, if you don't know about me, obviously I'm not a longtime Clippers fan. Uh, you know, I've been living in Los Angeles for almost eight years. It'll be eight years next January. But I have been watching the Clippers pretty much since I've moved to LA. Um, obviously, the Lakers have always been on their own kind of cable package, of, you know, through the Spectrum thing. I've always been a you know a cord cutter, so I was never a huge Lakers fan to begin with. And it's not that I'm anti-Lakers. So everybody out there that thinks that I'm anti-Lakers, whatever, you guys are ridiculous. I think that you guys just look, you know look for stuff to nitpick at, um, you know, as it pertains to our brand. So any way, any fashion you can do, you know, to hate on it, that's what you say. I'm not anti-Lakers. I'm just a realist. And the, and the reality of the situation is that the LA Clippers for 2020, for the 2019-2020 season, have the best team in Los Angeles. They have quite possibly the best team in the NBA. Actually, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they got the best team in the NBA. I think Patrick, uh, you know, Beverly next year will be a defensive dog. Defensive dog. The craziest part about this Clippers team is that they have nobody where if you're playing them, 
We can be like, yo, we can switch off to him. He's a weakness. Landry is a great defender. He played Steph Curry greatly in that first round last year. Actually, if I can, I'm going to include, um, you know, a clip, um, you know, up next in regards to Landry Shamit as well as um, in regards to Steph Curry in the playoffs. Landry is a tough defender. And even as Shay, you know, you know, Gilgis Alexander said when he was on the Clippers team that the Clippers look at Patrick Beverly to be the guy. Personally, I think Pat is the energy of the team. Um, locks us in before um, and at halftime and things like that. Um, and then we just feed off of him uh, as far as defensively. Uh, I feel like as a unit, we're, when we get going defensively, uh, our offense to get so. To come in and get them started off with energy. So if you're looking at it from that perspective, I mean, Landry is a good pickup, but he's the weakest link on defense. So you have a starting line above, um, you know, Patrick Beverly, Landry Shamit, Kawhi Leonard, and Paul George with with Zubac, I said Zubac is gonna be you know um, baby Mark Gasol. So the fact that you have that is amazing. Even the Clippers bench. Let's take a look at the bench. Coming off the bench in terms of the depth that this Clippers team have, this Clippers team is also the deepest team in the NBA by far. Which is the thing that makes this Kawhi Leonard you know joining this Clippers team so amazing because they didn't sacrifice any of their depth. They sacrificed a lot of their future. But if you're the Clippers, we want to win. The Clippers want to win a championship. I want to be covering the Clippers game when the Clippers win a championship. So I want to see them win. So, um, you know, it, as it pertains to their depth, I just read off the starting lineup. But coming off the bench, Lou Will, Tyrone Wallace, Jermichael Green, Montrez Harrell, Jerome Robertson, Rodney Magruder, Wilson Chandler, veteran, um, 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 Angel Delgado, Sedarius Thornwell, and they got Jonathan Motley, who I believe is a rookie. Uh, he was a rookie last year, I believe, but didn't really play that much. He just played in garbage time. Um, but, I mean, if you're looking at this Clippers team, this Clippers team is stacked. Lou Will can come off the bench any given night, give you 25. Montrez can come off the bench any given night, give you 20. Mo Harkless was a perennial starter, um, you know, you know, you know, for the Blazers ever since Evan Turner kind of declined. So you got a starter coming off the bench. You have essentially a full starting lineup coming off of the bench every single time you go to your bench. So if you're Doc Rivers, you can stagger the lineups. You can put PG on the bench. You can give Kawhi Leonard his rest. You can give PG his rest. If PG need, you know, his time coming back from his shoulder injury, give him his time. This Clippers team is the best team in Los Angeles, and it's not even funny. So it's, like I said, quite possibly the best team in the NBA. The only team that I would give the advantage on, you know, you know to the Clippers as of right now uh, would probably be the 76ers, and that's only because they were a bounce away, you know, Kawhi Leonard bounce away from, you know, being in the finals, as well as the Bucks because the Bucks have a team that's coming back, you know, 61 team last year, MVP of the league, and Giannis Antetokounmpo, he's coming back next year. They look to be more formidable. They have more toughness down low, which is ironically they built that toughness and they got those guys to play tougher so that way they can deal with a team like the Toronto Raptors. But honestly, I think that the Bucks would have a great chance against a team like this, um, you know, against the Clippers in the finals. I think the I think the 76ers would have a, a great chance against a team like the Clippers in the finals. But I think that it really depends on the health of guys like Joel Embiid. It depends on Giannis continuing to be healthy. But it also depends on Kawhi Leonard's health. It depends on Paul George's health. Those are the two biggest factors that you have to worry about when you're thinking about dealing with these guys. I'm about to look up Kawhi Leonard's health stats right now um, so that we can talk about it. You know, um, Pappy and I have had this argument on Hoops and Brews a ton in regards to Anthony Davis and Kawhi Leonard. And the argument is always in regards to, all right, well, who do you think is more injury or more injury prone? And technically, even though Kawhi has played one less season than Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis has played more games in his career than Kawhi Leonard has by far, by more than a full season. So if we're talking about who's healthier, even if you take away those 82 games from Anthony Davis, he still played more career games than Kawhi Leonard. So that shows you that even though you look at a guy like Anthony Davis as being injury prone, a guy like Kawhi Leonard is actually more injury prone. Um, and you know, and if you look at a guy like Paul George, Paul George has had his fair share of injury. Now we'll give him, you know, you know, his credit for the fact that he's not always injured. I mean, obviously he had the terrible injury in the Olympics, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, you know, apparently he tore his rotator cuff last year, which is bad for him. But if you look at Paul George, pretty much every year in his career, he's played over 65. Oh, I'm sorry, he's played over 60 games, with the exception of the year that he broke his foot. And even last year, he played 77 games. So I think this Clippers team has the best team in LA. I think Lakers fans should be scared. I think the NBA should be scared, and I think the Clippers are going to wind up being a six.
63 win team this year. You can book it. You heard it here. Welcome. This is my brand new show, my brand new podcast. It's called The New Show in LA, starring your boy TPJ. Shout out to all you Clippers fans out there. Make sure you check it out. You subscribe um, on YouTube, and I'll get up with you guys next week on The New Show with TPJ. Peace out.